Okay, so this is what uh, we are about to cover. And apart from that, uh, I'll be covering uh, the FRS, Financial Reporting Studio, and uh, Smart View. So these are the uh, new things uh, uh, that we have in our region if we have already worked in uh, EPS. Okay. So I'll, I'll be sharing this uh, course content with you uh, in the group. I'll be sharing it. Uh, so probably if you want to have anything, so probably we can check it out. So for this uh, session, uh, I thought of having it uh, in the application, but uh, application is getting refreshed, so it, it will take another uh, four five hours to uh, complete it. Okay. So meanwhile, what I'll do is that uh, I have manual with me, so I'll be uh, taking the class with uh, manual. Okay. 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 Uh, give, give me a minute, let me share this. Yeah, uh, I think you're able to see my screen, right? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. we can. Yeah, so uh, to start with, so we have something called a person that is a functional setup uh, manager. So whatever configuration that we wanted to do so that we will start from a functional setup manager, okay? So if I want to do any sort of configuration in the system, I will have to have uh, the roles. So here, what exactly is role is that we have something called uh, responsibility. So responsibility in EBS is nothing but what I can do as an user or as an implementation or as a consultant is what we define uh, responsibility. So whatever report or whatever the functionality that I have access to it, so I can uh, perform those activities. So similarly, we define here uh, the roles, okay? So roles, when we talk about it, so we have the uh, seeded roles and we also customize the roles because uh, seeded roles give uh, access to all the functionalities and all the reports. So we wanted to restrict it, so we customize that. So I'll, I'll show in the system, uh, probably in the next class, I'll be showing it. So how we will uh, customize uh, the roles. So primarily, these are the uh, roles that we have. So first thing is that uh, application implementation user, wherein with this uh, particular role, I'll be able to configure or I'll be able to set up the system, okay? So for example, I have uh, application implementation consultant. So this is one role that I have with this, I will, I will be able to do the configuration. And uh, the second thing that I have is that business user. So business user is nothing but payable user is the one role that I can mention. Similarly, we have a general ledger user and the other mo modules as well. And uh, then we have the administrator uh, role, that is uh, IT security uh, is the role name, okay? So what we will do with this particular uh, role is that uh, this is used to maintain the roles and the uh, users that we create in the system or we customize in the system. This particular person or this particular department will have access to remove or give access to the roles and the users, okay? So these are the uh, different types of roles that we have. And uh, this roles we cannot, we will be uh, assigning directly to the user, okay? So if you compare with uh, EBS, so we have uh, the responsibility. Uh, I mean, uh, this responsibility we have attached to menu. So menu will have the list of functions that I can uh, utilize, okay? But we cannot directly attach menu with the user, but whereas here uh, menu is nothing but the role, so we are attaching directly to the user. So that's the only change that we have uh, in region. Okay. So uh, maybe I'll explain more uh, in detail, like uh, how this role is being defined, because in screenshot I haven't taken uh, in detail. So this will uh, talk about only a particular role, how we are assigning uh, this. So in system, I'll be able to show that what are the functions that we have and how do we uh, uh, split up or how do we uh, customize this particular role. Okay. So one doubt. Uh, yeah. So application implementation is with the implementation team, right? So yes, they will is. do all the implementation setups. Correct. 
So business or end user is the BPO things they are using AP payments, AP yeah. like yeah. only yeah. the specific module and, and the end user. So administrator is like the support head or something support team, yeah. right? Yeah. Correct. what is super user and key user then? yeah super user is like a manager so manager will have access to the uh, payment uh, i mean period closure and you'll be able to have the access to the reports he will uh, have the access to the journal and we review all those things but whereas user will not have business user will not have access to all those things you will be having access only to the journal and system so that's the difference between super user and the uh, business or the end user Uh, does that answer your uh, query? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, any other question? No room. Okay. Okay, fine. So, uh, first step, if you see, uh, so we'll be uh, creating a project. So, here, what exactly a project is, it? probably I'll take it from here. Okay, so this is the screen where we will uh, create the project. So this is the screen. So that is setup and maintenance. And if we click uh, setup and maintenance, we have these options. Okay, manage implementation project. So why do we basically create project is that in uh, in a real time, in an implementation project, we have a certain task to do. And probably we have different resources. That is uh, finance, we have probably 10 resources and ESM probably uh, uh, 10 resources and then technical similarly, okay? So to track this, we have separate tools like Zira and uh, other tools, but uh, Fusion has provided uh, uh, a privilege wherein we can track inside the application where we specify what are the modules that we are going to implement and those modules will be assigned to a particular person and we can set up the uh, target timeline and all those details. Can you explain this in itself? Uh, this one, yeah. for example, how many user okay. yeah. so that we'll understand. So like that is finance, two user, three user, a, a CM, all the consultants required for the company, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. If it's generic, no problem. Okay. You, clear, precise, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, then like you can a, move. Huh. It is then like we can move the theory. Yeah, tell me. Uh, it is like a, if, if any new project is coming, you assign some of the people from some of the departments. There you create these uh, all things, right? Correct, correct. Like it is uh, finance is huge. It is a manufacturing industry. You need uh, each module one finance also. You have based on the big size of the project. And correct, ACM correct. need a uh, technical like that. Then you can continue theory. Thanks. Yeah, continue around. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so basically this week, uh, okay. Uh, so implementation project, we will define in such a way that uh, the name that uh, the implementation project that we are going to define. So in this case, we have taken uh, Hello India as an uh, sample uh, scenario, and we are uh, trying to implement a fusion application for this particular person, okay? So we will have uh, the project uh, duration that is start date and uh, end date, all those things. So based on that, we will assign the project. So this will be initial project uh, creation phase. So once this project is created, then we will have to assign those uh, modules that we are going to uh, implement. So once those assignments are done, so we will have a, a shortcut here in the setup. So we can select from here, whether we are going to implement for financial, SEM or appropriate. Okay. So if I have assignment to only finance module, so probably I will have access only to the finance. Okay, so th this is kind of an uh, uh, search uh, criteria where we can uh, search based on the task. Let's say I don't know, uh, I know only the task name, but I don't know the navigation. So I can simply search here or I have on another option here. So there are two types of search here. So if I search particular task, I will be able to drill down and uh, I can access uh, those tasks and I can do the uh, required configuration. Okay. So once this project is uh, created, then we can track it. So track it meaning that uh, we have assigned, let's say five resources for uh, AP module. So I can uh, monitor those performance, whether they have configured uh, uh, 10 business unit or 20 business unit. 
So business unit is nothing but uh, operating unit in EBS, which means an entity which incur either expense or it generates uh, revenue. So that we call it as a uh, business unit. So we can uh, we can track all those changes. So let's say we have uh, designed a structure in a such a way that uh, I'll have uh, four uh, ledgers and then probably I have uh, legal entities and then uh, each ledger will have uh, 10 or 15 uh, business units. So now if I have assigned this uh, task to a uh, uh, resource A who does the configuration for accounts payable. So I can track whether this particular person has uh, configured five unit or uh, 10 business units, okay? So that's the purpose of having uh, the uh, implementation project, okay? So, so this, this, is, this is kind of this is kind of kind of a summary like where you can able to correct. monitor all those things right yeah correct correct okay so Arun, like this option manage implementation projects we can see this option only from particular user or application implementation user or we can see yeah, no. so this is based on the role that we are giving. So for this user, if you see, I have given application implementation consultant role. So he is able to oh, see okay. all those options. But if I if I'm logging in as a uh, general ledger user, I'll not be able to see these options. So oh, okay. this setup so, can, so yeah yeah let, let let's say that like you you have that application one of the got it and you have assigned to five of the people's. Yeah. So you can see all the five people, but the user the person yeah. whom you have allocated that uh, implementation, yeah. he can see whatever the queue in his, uh, means whatever the things in his queue alone, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. okay. Clear option for me. Okay. Okay, so that's about the <coughs> implementation, okay? And uh, then we have an option called uh, copy configuration. So the reason why we will have copy uh, configuration uh, is that, uh, let's say I, ha I, I wanted to take a backup of uh, this particular uh, setup that I have made uh, till now. So I can take a backup of that. So that's the reason that we have a copy configuration so that we can uh, either uh, import or export. So in this uh, process called manage export and uh, import process, we can uh, import the configuration or probably we can export the configuration. Okay. So here, uh, like, uh, <clears throat> just imagine that you you have a set of for a sub, some company, okay, X. So, okay. And now you want to do for a similar setup, like if same kind of industry has given you the task. Okay. So you want to bring the same setup to a company Y. So okay. you can do the copy configuration or yeah, uh, if we, yeah, we can do the copy configuration. Import and export that, option can be used. Yeah. Okay. And and the, in that case, the data will not come, right? Means only no, the data will not come. No, data will not come because uh, the copy uh, is only for the configuration first thing. And uh, this copy that we would have made uh, at the time of setup phase, not at the uh, after data migration. Okay. So, so if it is completed, let's say just uh, for an example, okay. company X, you have already completed everything. Okay. Like user also tested and then it is implemented. Okay. And suddenly you got a new one. Okay. Uh, similar kind of things. Okay. So in that case, you cannot do this copy configuration. Huh? No, we can do because this is only talks about the configuration. This will not include okay. any uh, data. Okay. Okay. Complete. User data will not be included into this, so that is a separate page where we can uh, where we have a uh, FBDA option. So FBDA is nothing but uh, exporting into uh, Excel based uh, files. So wherein uh, we can download the data from there. So whatever the data that I wanted to pick from there, so I will have to use uh, that particular option. So this is only for the configuration uh, export and import. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, so fine with this yes yes sir okay fine so this would be uh, our uh, first uh, phase wherein uh, we will be given uh, the username and password the admin username and password by oracle 
So after receiving it, uh, so the first thing that we will do is that uh, create the implementation project and assign the, uh, uh, so we call it as offering. Okay, so app, uh, which means modules, uh, finance, SCM, all those things. So after assigning these things, so the next step is to create the user and uh, the roles. So the roles, usually we will uh, use the, uh, uh, the seeded roles for the initial uh, configuration. That is, uh, uh, that is for the general or the verification part. As an uh, consultant uh, or the as an uh, implementation partner, so we'll be having the uh, certain uh, roles to do that is testing and configuration and this. So for this, we will uh, uh, use the seeded role that is application implementation consultant. As I said, so this is for the configuration part and IT security manager. Of, of course, we will assign it because that is how we will uh, assign the role. And uh, then the uh, general ledger user and manager uh, we have. So I'll be sharing you the list of uh, roles that we have. And uh, we have also the repository. So that is uh, open source. So I'll be sharing the uh, link with you. Probably you can have a look at it. Okay. So from there, uh, we will assign the uh, roles. So I'll, I'll just show you. Okay. So this is the page. So once we uh, get into the uh, security console, so we can add user or add role or customize role. So first thing that we will do is that add role. So this is the uh, navigation. You click uh, add user account. Okay. So you will give uh, the last name, uh, email ID and uh, the username password. So the reason why we will give uh, the uh, email ID is that if I want to reset the password, so this can be uh, routed the way we don't need any admin rights and these things. So we can uh, reset using our uh, own email address. So that's the purpose of this. Okay. So once this uh, basic informations are uh, given, then adding the role. So whatever the role uh, I wanted to give to this particular user, whether he is manager or end user or uh, mid user, so I can give the uh, roles appropriate. So here you can see. So this is the uh, roles that uh, we have taken for this particular uh, activity. So that is uh, this role setup and IT security. And uh, if this person is an employee, so we will assign this as an uh, employee. So if I have given this as an employee, which means I have license for HCM and also I have created the uh, employee record. Okay, so that's the meaning. And uh, then I have uh, given the, so usually we will not give all these roles since this is a uh, testing environment. So we have given all these roles. So these are the primary uh, roles that we will assign. So this general ledger consultant uh, will have, I mean, accountant will have uh, access to the uh, creation of uh, uh, the journal entry and uh, period closure and these activities. Whereas the manager will have uh, the consolidated view, that is smart view and FSM. So all those uh, access will be given to the general ledger accountant manager. So Arun, you have the list like if we have, uh, if you want to give one person this access, yeah, uh, which under it will come this kind of like you, you have that uh, also information means. Yeah, yes, yes, I have the list. So that's what I'll be uh, sharing you the uh, list of roles with you. And uh, I need system to show what are the functions that are available under this particular role. So that's what uh, I said uh, today. I'll just uh, give the overview. So probably yeah, yeah, yeah. When, I, when I get uh, the system back, so I'll be showing you what are the functionalities that we can uh, uh, see under this particular role and how we will customize those roles and how will we uh, assign this uh, role to the particular user. So that uh, for that, I'll, I need uh, the application. Yeah. Yeah, but, but the list of uh, roles I'll be sharing you uh, in the group, I'll share it. Okay. Only one doubt here, the security part, what you will do on the security, like you have to, uh, the fifth point. Yeah, th this is a uh, name of the role, IT security manager. Okay. Oh, oh IT security manager. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. IT security manager is uh, this uh, role, actually. Uh, this one, administration. Or, Admin uh, and IT. IT. Yeah. Okay. So that person will basically create a user assigned role and do mm -hmm. yeah 
so that's about it uh, so this will be our uh, initial uh, this thing so once this is done so probably we can log out from the uh, admin and uh, we can log in as an implementation consultant and uh, after login so uh, we have also the project uh, created so we can start uh, the general ledger uh, configuration okay so now we'll move on yeah yeah so probably uh, this, uh, you know, I think, uh, but still, I'll, I'll just try to explain. So uh, we have uh, four C's. So that is currency, calendar, uh, chart of account, accounting uh, convention. So here currency, this is a uh, known thing. So the calendar, uh, there is a, a slight change from uh, EBS. So EBS, we will have to use uh, the manual screen or the data loader to uh, load the uh, calendar, these things. Uh, but here uh, we don't have, uh, I mean, we don't need to do that. So we have an option wherein uh, we will give only the from date and to date and system will automatically create the date for us and uh, we just want to uh, complete that activity. Okay, so that's calendar. And uh, to load the chart of account, again, we don't need to use any tools. So we have a standard uh, FPDA and JFPDA uh, based Excel uh, tool wherein we can uh, just uh, add the values there and we can uh, say upload. And we also have the uh, instructions there, like uh, uh, how to use this uh, Excel sheet. And uh, after loading, we will get it. So basically how we uh, do this is that we have a Excel sheet where, uh, where we can download it from uh, this repository, so, so which I was mentioning it. So from the repository, I'll be downloading the sheet and I will add the content. So basically I'll create this mapping and all those things, right? So after finalizing the chart of accounts, so I can add the values here and uh, I can uh, use this FBDA to upload it to Fusion application, okay? So, so let's say this chart of accounts, Okay. Uh, you have set, set up in Oracle that this this G, this uh, a, like one series or two series GL will go to the one to five series will go to the asset and six to nine okay. will go to uh, sorry liabilities okay. and that that is a setup already been there in that uh, you are not doing anything right no this is i'm talking about uh, the fresh uh, implementation if i want to do it so i'll, I'll have to uh, create everything uh, new right so how that case i'm saying uh, so so how we will do it means it is it is uh, somebody has to provide you the data or you need to be done work from your end no somebody, no basically uh, to design the chart of accounts we will discuss with the uh, finance and the accounts department and the uh, on the design and the structure, how they wanted to have. So basically, chart of account is nothing but it's a combination. It's a combination wherein, uh, let's say, I take. Uh, okay, let me share uh, my Excel. Okay, so usually it will be uh, more than eight or nine uh, segments. So uh, to understand, I have taken this as an uh, only four segments. Okay, so the uh, first segment that I have taken as an uh, company. So basically, why do we capture or why do we use this uh, particular option called chart of account? Is that uh, to have uh, the proper uh, data management? Because uh, here we have something called validation. So unless I have added value in my system, I'll not be able to uh, use or do any sort of transaction in the system. Okay. So let's say this I have given as uh, zero one, and this I have given as uh, uh, four five eight nine. This is one account. Okay. So this is one value that I have selected. <clears throat> so now, so this I will use it for uh, JV. So let's say this is my uh, combination that is uh, 01.4589.01.01. So now if I want to use this, I'll have to load this particular uh, values uh, in the system. So 
so how i will uh, load the uh, values as that i have two options either i can enter it manually or i have an excel sheet wherein i can uh, utilize uh, uh, this upload option and uh, i can load uh, uh, this fpta uh, templates basically so what i was explaining is that uh, to uh, to add the values in the system <coughs> so this uh, fpda template will allow me to add uh, values in the system such a way that uh, uh, there, there are certain validations uh, to get into the interface table and uh, these things so after passing this uh, table so this will create as a master wherein uh, i can see in the uh, uh, a general ledger module so uh, so one thing only uh, uh, ju just for an example, let's say I have a separate set of like, like say tally we are using, okay? Okay. And I have the data with me okay. for my okay. company and now I am implementing Oracle. Okay. So uh, I have a separate uh, like values and all those things. So when you are preparing chart of account, my question is, <clears throat> you you first get a, get up their data, correct? Yes, yeah, correct. And, and then you try to bring it to a Oracle model. Let's uh -huh. say they are booking asset five asset in a separate separate account. Yeah. And now we have to bring it the Oracle level that five accounts with the uh -huh. same value because uh, that will be audited, right? So uh -huh. the same value. The value part will be coming from the past company. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Company history. Uh -huh. My question is like now this chart of account, what you are going to prepare, like which series goes and what is the account could be, how many bank account will be there. Yeah. Those are all things created by us. Yeah. As, as Correct. Implemented. Correct. So, uh, so that account numbers and all you will yeah. choose from your like Oracle have that background data and you choose from that, which account it will go or how it will work. That's what my. Yeah. So the account now uh, I'm choosing is that I, uh, uh, I mean, uh, this is basically from the uh, legacy system. So let's say legacy system uh, is tally and tally has an uh, convention that uh, four by uh, eight name. So probably we will use as of this uh, as an account or probably if business needs uh, another addition. Let's say a uh, business wants to uh, track the location. So location will be zero one two zero nine. So uh, nine nine in this case we are adding location here and probably so uh, i'm just giving example but there might be a scenario where we might add uh, i mean we might change four digit to six digit but the value will not change value will uh, still remain same where we will have the mapping and based on the mapping we will be loading the balances that is historical balances and Correct. what i was saying is that as a part of master the company department enter company so these are uh, oracle standard things so which we will not uh, find in uh, tally so these are the uh, new components that we are bringing in so this we call it as an uh, chart of account uh, structure as well. okay okay so so you you also give like let's say because uh, the why i'm asking is it is the major part of like when you are creating Correct. it so let's say I'm having a tally, uh, some account, keeping as an asset account as 00056. Okay. So probably what will be happening in the Oracle, Oracle have the eight digit number or nine digit number. So we will be keeping the same for 000056 with double zero. So the uh, means the legacy part, people will not find difficult to get that uh, they, they are where they are keeping the books, right? Books of accounts. Correct. Correct. Okay, but your company department and intercompany should be the similar line of setup where it yeah. will be merging to the same company details. Correct. Okay, okay. Okay, got it. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, so that is about the uh, chart of account, and uh, then we have uh, the accounting convention. So, accounting convention is nothing but how uh, we do our accounting. So, that is standard accrual or uh, this one. So, that is standard one that we have. So, probably if we have a requirement to uh, customize this uh, flow of accounting. So, let's say uh, instead of uh, company 01, I wanted to get uh, 02 or department 03, anything that we wanted to change from the original uh, accounting practice. 
so that uh, we will customize it so that we call it as an accounting convention method okay so that meaning uh, the way we want to account uh, these particular uh, journal of the transaction okay. and uh, yeah so then uh, we have the uh, currency so currency is uh, is nothing but so, so we have only two things so one is either the uh, functional currency so functional currency is nothing but the currency that i'm using uh, inside my uh, region or my, inside my country so this we call it as a functional currency and uh, the foreign currency which we say as an uh, the vendor or the customer currency let's say i'm uh, importing from different currency so i will have to make the payment in the appropriate uh, currency that is let's say uh, usd so i'll have to make the payment in usd so that we call it as a foreign currency okay Sorry. and uh, then we have the uh, reporting currency so reporting currency uh, is nothing but let's say uh, i have uh, my headquarters uh, situated in uh, us but i have operations also in india uh, china singapore and other countries as well so now if i want to report my uh, transactions uh, to the uh, headquarters i'll report in their particular uh, currency so for this we have a thing called reporting uh, currency or reporting ledger we have it. okay so these are the uh, three things and uh, stack uh, is used uh, for non financial uh, transactions basically so these are the uh, three primary uh, currencies uh, that we have and now if i want to do any foreign currency transaction i will need to have a rate defined to it because rate today might be uh, 70 rupees and tomorrow might be 72 rupees so the rate might uh, differ okay so based on that what we will do is that we will create a rate and this rate will determine whether this is in profit or loss to the company when we are uh, making the payment or uh, when we are releasing the payouts to the uh, vendor okay so that we call it as an uh, release or unrelease uh, gain or loss basically uh, in terms of currency what is the start currency you said so start currency is basically for uh, non financial uh, transactions like if we want to derive uh, some value like we have a uh, mass allocation so where uh, we might use uh, the stack currency and we might uh, derive the value so for those purpose we have it so this stack currency will not uh, give any financial uh, impact basically this is non financial currency okay so that also needs to be fixed when time of implementation or it is a not a mandatory thing it's a no, this is optional not a mandatory 